Hello again, everybody. This is Joseph. And continuing, actually, this is a continuation. I actually uploaded a, a, a video for people to test their knowledge of a two-stage amplifier and to try to troubleshoot it. And I said, I'm going to take some components out, theoretically, obviously, and see how you can troubleshoot it. Now, I'm going to go and give some responses or some uh, um, some ideas how to go about troubleshooting it. If you remember, in the first video, testing your knowledge for amplify uh, troubleshooting, I said, these are the voltages, and I gave you the voltages. This is a two-stage amplifier, common emitter, common emitter. This is a coupling capacitor, and this is the voltage bias divider that we have over here, and this is the one kilohertz going in. So, therefore, if this is a common emitter, the, the, um, the signal comes in here, it's inverted, and it's amplified. And it goes through here, and it's amplified again over here. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take out R8, one kilo ohm resistor in the emitter circuit right here. I'm going to take it out. You see this right here. Now, and I asked the viewers... How would you, go, would you go about troubleshooting it? So I got various emails on what people thought and, and, and what they responded. So therefore, <clears throat> let's go about troubleshooting it as best as we can to understand. Now, when you troubleshoot the two stages, you have to think of two things. DC and AC. <clears throat> what is being affected? Is the AC being affected? The AC signal being affected? Or is the DC voltage is being affected by the defective circuit or component in this case? <clears throat> Let's see. I took this one out. This is open right now. I put a signal in here. One kilohertz signal. 10 volts, uh, 10 millivolts peak to peak. I put my, my, my oscilloscope here. I put my oscilloscope here. What should I expect to see? I should expect to see a regular sine wave with amplification and inverted that tells me right away this circuit is working properly i go over here to the output across rl if this would be a speaker this would be my output i go over here and i go over here i go i see my signal after it's been coupled my signal looks good over here my signal does not look good over here i have no output at the speaker or the load that tells me right away this part of the circuit is defective. Now, we see AC signal-wise, we got it down to this. When I put a speaker over here, I got absolutely no audio. So we got it down from two stages to one stage. Now, we do basic DC voltage measurements. <clears throat> so, we know, we said over here, a proper working voltages are 1.5, 0.9, and 15 volts. That means there's 9 volts across here. <clears throat> when we go over here, we measured about 1.5 volts. That tells me that this bias circuit is working properly, the voltage divider circuit. I come over here, uh-oh, problem. I measure 24 volts right here. That's a problem. That's a big problem, right? Right here. 24 volts. That tells me there is no current flowing through this collector load resistor. Okay. Because there's no voltage drop across it. There's zero volts across it. That means there's no current flowing through here. No current flowing through this part of the circuit. Let's see why now. Do we have forward bias to turn on the, the base emitter? Well, let's measure. 1.5 here. And as you see, as I wrote over here, because of this resistor that we're trying to figure out what the problem is, we measure 1.2 volts. So we're measuring a little higher. So it doesn't really have forward bias because forward bias we need about 0.6. This is 1.5, this is 1.2. That's about 0.3 volts. It's not enough to turn it on. And that would make sense because there's no current flowing in here. But why can it not be turned on? Is there something open in this circuit? Let's see. <clears throat> Usually resistors, when they go bad, they increase in value. They go high. They open. They don't short. 
So therefore, if this would increase in value, and if this would be the problem, we wouldn't measure 24 volts over here. We would measure less. We would measure zero volts. And we're not. We're measuring 24 volts. That tells me probably this resistor is good. Now comes the interesting part. 1.5 volts here, 1.2 volts over here. <clears throat> so maybe the base emitter junction is not good. Possible. Let me put my meter over here. 1.2 volts I measure over here. I see over here. Higher than usual. <clears throat> Why do I measure higher than usual? Some emails from people said, well, maybe the, maybe, uh, uh, the ground. No, not really the ground. Right? If the ground was bad, it would affect all of them. Some people told me maybe the, the, the transistor, possible, possible, possible. But the fact that this went up in voltage from 0.9 to 1.2 tells me there's more current going through it. But that's not really true because there's no current going through here. So we can't say that. Did this increase in value? Well, let's see. We took this out. Did We took out this. Resistor. Why am I measuring something? <clears throat> and the answer is, when you put your meter here, even though this is open circuit, your meter is giving a path for current to flow through the meter, believe it or not. So therefore, depending on the impedance of the meter, you will measure something because of the meter completing the path, believe it or not. Therefore, when I went to 0.9 regular, and I went to 1.2 volts, told me that the resistance increased. And that's because of the meter, high input impedance meter. That tells me I'm closing the circuit, and when I take away the meter, it's open. So I hope you understood that. <clears throat> that's a very, very interesting point. Remember, if something is open and I put a meter there, the current has now a path to flow, and you will be measuring a voltage drop. Therefore, I measured 24 volts over here, nothing across here, because there was no current going through. This is open, until I put the meter to measure, to troubleshoot. I hope you understood that, and I hope I simplified it. There's two more that we'll go over next time, but if you, if you guess that, you're very good. That is a very complicated... Uh, 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 an effective uh, component or, or uh, analysis. If you really evaluate it and you came to that conclusion, you are, you are ready to be a automotive diagnostic technician. Anyway, thanks for watching and I, please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Thanks for watching.